Hi, I'm Lex from SmartyClothes.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make a square bottom bag like this for WhatTheCraft.com. Step one, we are going to make a pattern, and I'm just using a regular piece of scrap paper, 8.5 by 11. I'm marking all the edges with a half inch seam allowance. You can go smaller than that if you want, it's up to you. Now this is going to make a fairly small bag with finished dimensions that are about 6 inches across, 4 inches wide, and 5 inches deep. So if you want a bigger bag, just go ahead and make a bigger pattern. Now I'm cutting out the gussets. Don't freak out if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll explain that in a minute. And I will also show a close-up version with the measurements for your pattern. So if you're lost, patience my friend. As promised, our finished bag pattern. The top piece is going to be a pattern for our strap. It's 11 inches long by 3 inches wide. The bottom piece is the base of the bag and the lining and is 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall. This is showing the half inch seam allowance that I've marked all around every piece. And like I said, if you want to go with a smaller seam allowance, feel free to do that. And this is our gusset, which is 2 inches by 2 inches, basically a square cut out of each side of the bottom corner of our bag. Okay, our pattern's finished, so now we need to assemble our materials, and I've got interfacing, lining fabric, and the base fabric. Now here I am, ironing the fabric, doing my damnedest to set a good example for all of you out there. But just know that I don't usually do this, because I'm a rebel, and I like to break the rules. Just don't tell my mom. So now that we've got everything nice and flat, I'm going to lay down my lining fabric, I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to put down my base fabric and fold that in half, and then I'm going to lay my pattern piece on top of that, so I can cut all four pieces out at once. We want two of the lining and two of the base fabric. You could, of course, mark your fabric before you start cutting, but I'm not going to do that. I'm a loner daddy. A rebel. Alright, so get this baby all cut out. So we have, like I said, one, two base fabric, one, two lining fabric. So I need two more of that same pattern piece out of the interfacing, and I'm just going to use one of the outer bag pieces that we cut already. And this time I'm going to cut it using my rotary cutter, just because it's fast. And it is easier to do these smaller inside corners with scissors, so. I'm using an iron-on interfacing, so right now I have to iron it on. If you're not familiar with interfacing, it's going to give our bag a little extra strength and weight, and will also keep the bag shape. The big thing you want to remember if you're using iron-on interfacing, which is also sometimes called fusible interfacing, is that fusible interfacing has one side that has the dried glue layer which is allowing you to fuse it to the fabric. Always make sure you have that face down when you start ironing because if you put the hot iron directly on that layer you're going to wind up with a hot mess. Now that we've got all the components of the main body of the bag cut out, we're going to cut out the strap. So I'm going to fold the main fabric and another bit of the lining fabric in half so that, if you recall, our pattern piece is 3 inches by 11, we'll actually wind up with a 22 inch long strap because we're cutting it on the fold. Here's the lining for our strap and the actual strap. And of course we repeat on the interfacing. This piece of interfacing wasn't quite wide enough to fold it in half and get that full strap length. So I'm actually going to cut two separate pieces and then just fuse them together when I iron them to the back of the fabric and it'll be like I had one piece. And like I said before, if you wanted to do a longer strap, or a thinner strap, or you could even do two straps, you can go ahead and do that. Now we're going to apply the interfacing to our main strap fabric. Make sure you have that glue side down. Lay them out. Get your iron. And fuse. Preferably in warp speed. Okay, it's time to do some actual sewing. We're going to lay the backing or the lining of our strap right side together with our main strap fabric and then pin around the edges. And I will switch pins after this so that you can actually see it on the video. Alright, so we're going to start at one end. We're going to sew down that side. Now when you get to this skinny end, you can sort of ignore the seam allowance. Go, you can go pretty far. 
I did like a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance on this edge. And I'll explain that in a minute. And then you're going to go sew down the other side of the strap. And this again would have the half inch seam allowance that we marked earlier. So here's our strap all sewn together, inside out of course. So the first thing we need to do is trim our seam allowance. And I'm going to trim it down to about a quarter of an inch. And as I mentioned before, a rotary cutter makes this kind of thing so fast. Now we need to turn our strap right side out. And the easiest way to do that is with a chopstick or a bamboo skewer. It's a lot like turning a sock inside out. With a strap this wide, I might have been able to do it by hand without a chopstick. But in case you're doing something with a really skinny strap, I wanted to show this technique. You can use anything long and skinny, a pencil, a pen, whatever will fit in there. And try to be gentle because you can rip it. And that was why we sewed that one end with a really small seam allowance. So you can go ahead and cut that off because it will make ironing it flat a lot easier, which we will do now. If I didn't iron a single other piece of the bag, this would probably be the one part I would iron because it really does help get a nice crisp strap. Next, we're going to sew the actual bag and the lining pieces together. So I have the outer front and back of the bag right sides together and the lining right sides together and we pin or we don't either way and now I have some jumbo pins that you can actually see do take notice that I'm only pinning the sides and the bottoms of each piece you don't want to pin the top or the gussets of your bag pieces yet that comes at a later step back to the sewing machine we're gonna sew one side of the bag this is the outer bag and this is probably a good time to mention that if you do want to put any embellishments on the outside of the bag, whether it's a pocket or an applique or some sort of trim, do that before you sew these pieces together. When you get to the end of that side, back stitch, and then move on to the bottom, and completely bypass that gusset. As I said before, you do not want to sew the gusset closed. When you get to the end of that, back stitch, go past the gusset, and then sew up the last side. You're going to repeat the same process on the lining. Remember, don't sew over the gussets, just the sides and the bottom. And while we're here, I figure let's top stitch the strap. My, the foot I'm using has one edge of it that's about a sixteenth of an inch wide, so I just line that up with the edge of the fabric and use that as my guide. Now we want to trim the seam allowances from our bag pieces, and I'm just going to trim them down to about a quarter of an inch, just like our strap. So let's grab our sewn together outer bag piece. Put your fingers in that open gusset and pull it out at the corners. Push it flat and pin it, and that is your gusset that's going to give us the square bottom. Now you're going to repeat that with the lining but only do it for one gusset. You're going to leave the other gusset open. It's really important. Then we're going to sew up both gussets on the outer bag and the one gusset on the lining. And you can go ahead and do just a quarter inch seam allowance on this and not bother trimming it or you can do the half inch seam allowance if you want. So here we have our sewn up outside lining and strap. We're going to turn the outside right side out. We're going to take our strap, take the right side of the strap, and line that up with the side seam of our bag. Go ahead and pin that on one side, pull it around to the other side, and make sure the strap is flat and there are no twists in it. Do the same. Line up with the side seam and pin. Take it over to your sewing machine and we're going to stitch those straps to the bag. And you want to use a smaller seam allowance with this because we want this stitching to be hidden in the seam allowance for the rest of the bag. So do a quarter of an inch or less. So here's our strap attached to our bag. You can pull it up and note that the seam is on the inside and the outside of the strap is showing nice if you want to make sure you sewed it on right. And we are going to mash up the outside of the bag and put it inside the lining. And the lining at this point is still inside out. So when we get this all situated, our lining and the outside of our bag will be right sides together. 
and you want to get those nice and lined up with the side seams. So line the side seams up and go ahead and pin it together and you're going to pin all the way around the top of the bag. I like to line up the other side seam as well and pin that and then fill in the spaces with the rest of the pins. And if you measured and cut correctly, they should fit together perfectly. If not, you can unpin and do some minor adjustments with the side seams to make them fit. Now we're going to sew around the top edge of the bag. And this is where I mentioned before we want the stitching that is holding a strap to the outside of the bag hidden. So go with your standard half inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance around the top edge. And while you're sewing this part of the bag, particularly on a bag this small, make sure you're only sewing what you're meaning to be sewing. As you turn this bag around and sew around the edge, you want to make sure you're not catching any other bits of the bag in your stitches. Once we get back to where we started, back stitch a few times, and then we're done. So now we have our bag almost completely assembled, but it is completely inside out. Find the gusset that you did not sew shut, reach inside, and you can probably grab a piece of the strap. Start gently pulling it out of the gusset. Eventually you can get your hand on a piece of the outer bag. Again, be gentle, because you can rip that gusset wide open and you don't want to do that. Keep working it inside out. If you're a child of the 80s, you might remember the toy Popples. They were a lot like this. Eventually you'll get the bag right side out with the lining kind of poofed up on top. And now we need to close that gusset. And I'll show a slower version of this in a minute, but you're going to just fold it down inside itself, push it together, and pin it closed. Here's our gusset with the corners pulled open, just like we did with the other three. Fold it down into itself, about a quarter of an inch, pinch it closed, and pin. And then here's a close-up of it actually stitched closed, just so you can see what it looks like. So once you get it pinned, stitch it closed, use a really, really small seam allowance, like a sixteenth of an inch, basically just like you were top stitching something. You could hand slip stitch it closed, but I'm lazy, so I do it this way. And really, once it's turned into the bag, like so, no one would even know it's there unless they're looking for it. So this is probably the second most important ironing job, in my opinion. We're going to iron that top edge of the bag before we top stitch it, so we get a nice, crisp top edge. Top stitch around the edge using a very small seam allowance. Again, sixteenth of an inch is what I use. And just like when we were sewing the outer bag to the lining, make sure you're not catching the strap or any other bits of the bag into your top stitching while you're sewing. And when you get back to where you started, back stitch and clip your threads. And here's a nice close-up of the top stitching on the top edge of our bag. And there it is, all finished. Well actually I'm going to add a snap to mine, but you could use it just like this. So that's it for today's tutorial. Hopefully now you're a master of the square bottom bag. You can see more of my tutorials at whatthecraft.com and my creations at smartyclothes.com. Thanks for watching.